Okay, I will get started. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us here today. <clears throat> whether um, listening today or a few days from now, you will enjoy this presentation. I am Kathleen. I'm with Erie County Division of Senior Services. And I am on the University Express team. And University Express is a program that we developed about 10 years ago. And it has taken off and grown ever since. Uh, Francis has always been a part of our program for many years, so we appreciate him being with us. But uh, University Express is a free lifelong learning program for adults age 55 and older. And I also uh, want to mention that the Department of Senior Service, Services offers many different programs in addition to University Express. We have our Stay Fit Dining program where you can get a meal and nutrition counseling at over 48 sites throughout Erie County. We have a Choose Healthy Western New York workshop where you can learn how to better manage the challenges of chronic diseases. We have the Benefits Enrollment Center, which can help you determine your eligibility for benefits and help you apply for things like Supplemental Nutrition Assistance, or SNAP, or um, HEAP as well. And you can even talk to our Transportation Department to see if you are eligible for the Going Places Curb to Curb van service. So remember, give us a call. If you or anyone you know is in need of any of these services we offer, our phone number is 858-8526. So 858-8526. And our website is erie.gov backslash senior services. So just a little housekeeping today. Keep your phones on mute and we will take questions at the end. For the WebEx, we have a chat box, which is to the right of your screen. We have a little air bubble, like cartoonish air bubble, where you can click on that, and then you're able to type in your questions. And I'll send over a sample. And you'll see it pop up there. So as I mentioned earlier, Francis is with us today. It is Francis Listingy. And he has been a speaker for University Express for many years. And I'll tell you a little bit about him. While in elementary school in Queens, New York, Francis learned how to gild with genuine gold leaf from a, from a, a very kind and generous sign artist. So he's kind of like an apprentice for this, for this artist in Queens. Then after high school, Francis entered the religious teaching order of the Brothers of Christian Schools, the De La Salle Christian Brothers. Here he received an undergraduate degree in physics from the Catholic University of America and a master's degree under a National Science Foundation Fellowship from Rensselaer Polytech Institute. After Francis left the order, he earned a PhD on a U.S. Office of Education Fellowship at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He then taught physics, astronomy, and history of science at the State University of New York College at Buffalo, where he continued designing graphics now in special relativ relativity and astronomy and branched out into computer animation and filmmaking. Francis also designed illustrated graphics for the best-selling astronomy textbook in the nation. That's pretty cool. The State University of New York has honored Francis as the first professor to receive both the President's and the SUNY Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Teaching. In 1994, while still teaching, Francis decided to return to the letter arts and started Signs of Gold, Inc. with his master woodworker son, Stephen. He enjoyed it so much, he took early retirement and went on to full-time carving. He is also the co-founder 
co-director and president of the nonprofit 501c3 Buffalo Niagara Nikola Tesla Council, whose mission is to pay homage to prolific inventor Nikola Tesla by imparting long overdue educational awareness of his contributions to the betterment of our civilization. So today we welcome Francis and he has a special assistant with him. He'll, he'll, he'll tell us a little more about. Okay, Francis, take it away. Okay, well, thank you so much for that uh, too long introduction. <laughs> and uh, You have accomplished a lot, so we'll keep it all in there. Well, uh, I'd like to introduce Paul Swisher. He is our educa he's our education director, and he he actually makes all this possible. He gets everything done behind the scenes, and he's going to be uh, assisting today in the narration. So, are we ready to go? We I are think. ready. Okay, right. very good. There we go. So we're going to deal with uh, Edison and Tesla, the myths and the truth. And I'm going to ask a question first. When when you hear the word Tesla, do you think of this man, whom the New York Times in 1895 said with regard to the uh, triumph at Niagara Falls, perhaps the most romantic part of the story of this great enterprise would be the history of the career of the man above all men who made it possible, a man of humble birth who has risen almost before he reached the fullness of manhood to a place in the first rank of the world's greatest scientist and discoverers, Nikola Tesla. Or do you think of the Tesla Roadster or the Tesla Roadster that's in space or the Model S Tesla or the Model X? or the Model 3, or the Model Y, or the coming Cybertruck, or do you think of this man? Well, you should be thinking of these two who are not household names. They are the founders of Tesla Motors. Mark Tarpanen, an engineer from California, and Martin Eberhardt from California. They were the founders. And the reason why they did this, back in 2003, that's two decades ago, they were concerned about global warming. And their mission was <clears throat> to transition from the internal combustion engine to sustainable energy via the electric vehicle. And this is the motor that they uh, use, which is a variation of the motor that Tesla, Nikola Tesla invented in 18. Uh, 84. And they said, uh, without Tesla's vision and brilliance, our car would not be possible. We're confident that if he were alive today, Nikola Tesla would look over our 100% electric car and nod his head with both understanding and approval. And interestingly enough, the day that they uh, incorporated which was the 3rd of July in 2003, they kicked themselves because if they had waited a week, it would have been the birth date of Nikola Tesla. Well, where does Elon Musk come into the picture? He had produced PayPal, received $180 million, put $100 million into SpaceX, $70 million into Tesla, and he had to uh, borrow money for rent. But the fact is he bought Tesla Motors and fired the two uh, originators. Now, here is a statement uh, from a very fine uh, author. It is a sociological fact that Elon Musk uh, took the name of uh, Tesla into the stratosphere. Uh, Tesla's risen to the surface again and now is getting his due. Well, that is a myth because Elon Musk did not start the company. That he did not name it, even though there are articles like this saying why Elon Musk named his electric car Tesla. Well, uh, 
Elon Musk has done quite a bit of things. Uh, of course, he didn't start Tesla, but he bought it. And the question can be raised, uh, is it possible to be brilliant and at the same time, uh, and if you're interested in that, we have a, a prepared answer in the question and answer period. But we are now interested in the inventors, Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. <clears throat> and we'd like to know what an invention is. An invention is a unique or novel device, method, composition, idea, or process. An invention may be an improvement upon a machine, product, or process for increasing efficiency or lowering cost. It may also be an entirely new concept. If an idea is unique enough, either as a standalone invention or as a significant improvement over the work of others, it can be patented. A patent, if granted, gives the inventor a proprietary interest in the patent over a specific period of time, which can be licensed for financial gain. Well, the United States Patent Office and Trademark Office uh, is the place where uh, many legal eagles have become uh, fat and wealthy because of uh, litigation on patents, which we'll see. I start here with uh, probably what is considered the, the most important invention of all time, and that is the printing press. Usually I ask people who, who invented it, and everybody knows that it is Gutenberg, and they don't know the year necessarily, but it was 1440. Now, <clears throat> this is a, a painting by Raphael that's in the Vatican called the Academy. And interestingly enough, we have uh, Aristotle and Plato here, and uh, a number of people doing work here. We'll come to this picture later, but you can see people thinking uh, this is kind of a, a, a think tank. And they, they could be asking the question, uh, who invented the computer? Or who invented Wi-Fi? Or Bluetooth? Or GPS, global positioning system? Or LEDs, light emitting diodes, which will replace all the previous uh, means of illumination. Who invented the digital camera, which destroyed the Kodak company? Who invented the Ferris wheel? Well, here are people who had a lot to do with the invention of the computer. Here's Tesla, Marconi, and uh, Steve Wozniak. Now, Steve Wozniak and his friend, Steve Jobs were, uh, well, Steve Jobs was not an inventor, but he had m more inventions in his name than uh, Tesla. He had over 400. And that's because he got the credit for it, or at least got the patent for it. And we'll see that same kind of thing happens with uh, Edison. But the question could also be asked, where are the women? Now, this woman, by the name of Grace Hopper, invented all kinds of uh, languages for computing. And the amazing thing about her is that she has had 40 honorary degrees from universities across the world. Um, Edison had five. Uh, Einstein had 10 honorary degrees. And Tesla had 13. But this woman, Grace Hopper, had 40 honorary degrees. Hedy Lamar, the glamorous actress, is responsible for Wi-Fi. Here it says, the actress in, invents control device while toying with torpedo plan has a patent to prove it. And what about GPS, Global Positioning System? This lady by the name of Gladys West had to use Einstein's special theory of relativity, which says that clocks slow down when they speed up, and general theory of relativity, which says that clocks speed up in a gravitational field. And out of that came the GPS. Now, <clears throat> I'm showing the Brooklyn Bridge here which was completed in 1883. It was designed by this man, 
whose uh, son and his wife, that is Washington Roebling and Emily Roebling, what happened was the father, John, was crushed as the, uh, the bridge was being made in, in an accident. He, he was crushed. So the, the son took over, but then he received a, uh, uh, what was called a, a diver's disease, and he, it was incapacitated. So his wife took over for him, and her name is Emily Roebling, and she was in charge of constructing the Brooklyn Bridge. She was the first one to walk across it. I had the privilege of walking across it when I was in high school. And th this is a little um, tribute to her. The builders of the bridge dedicated to the memory of Emily Roebling. With faith and courage, she helped her stricken husband, Colonel Washington Roebling. Well, he was a graduate of RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. Uh, her son was a student there and she moved to Troy. And after he graduated, she went back to New York and got a uh, lawyer's degree from NYU. Well, the Ferris wheel. This is the original Ferris wheel from the 1893 Columbian Exhibition, which we'll see about later. And it was 240 feet high. It had 30 gondolas, which could carry 60 people each. It was as high as the m and Plaza Bank. And it was destroyed in 1906. And this is, uh, shows a little um, uh, a lady in her electric car going to see the destruction of it. But the inventor, uh, George Washington Gale Ferris, died three years after the, uh, the festival. So the fact is that everybody knows who invented the Ferris wheel, but he's long since gone. And he was a a student of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute as well. The Bluetooth has an interesting uh, uh, inventor with this name, which I won't pronounce. And it turns out that Bluetooth is the name after the 10th century Scandinavian king named Harold Bluetooth. And the, you can see the symbols got us the, the symbolic name for Bluetooth. Light emitting diodes, three Japanese, and the one on the right is a, an American Japanese. Uh, they are responsible for creating the, the last of, of the colors of the Bluetooths, uh, I'm sorry, of LEDs. And here is the first digital camera. It was bigger than a toaster. And there's the man who created it. His name is Stephen Sasson. Here he is receiving the Medal of Engineering and Innovation, which, as you notice, doesn't say anything about invention. He also is a graduate of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Now, I mention this because I have a degree from there, and I have no inventions to mention whatsoever. Hmm. Well, it turns out that the company that he worked for was Kodak. That was quite interesting. And then came the internet with its demonization of Edison and the deification of Tesla. And if you want to know who invented the uh, internet, it's the Department of Defense, their division of called the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DAPRA. And this is what the inter uh, internet has shown us. By the way, all of the imagery, imagery that you see today is from the internet. Here you see the big word vi versus. Tesla versus Edison. Tesla versus Edison. Tesla versus Edison. And of course, Tesla defeating 
Edison in this imagery. And even speed dating, the man asks Tesla or Edison, and she says, who is Tesla? And he says, next. Now, the internet has shown that Edison steals from Tesla, which is a total myth. Here are some examples, going back to the uh, image I showed you first uh, from the Academy. There's Thomas Edison stealing from Tesla. Or this one, Tesla says, I made this. You, uh, Edison says, you made this. He takes it and then he said, I made this. Or somebody named Tesla is uh, fishing. Somebody comes along and fishes out of his catch. And then the perennial question that the thinker is asking, if you are driving a Tesla car and it gets stolen, is it now called an Edison? And this, tomorrow is Te uh, Thomas Edison's birthday. Let's steal his day like he did Tesla's invention and celebrate Nikola Tesla with mimes instead. Hi, I'm Thomas Edison. I'm hailed as a hero. But in reality, I stole many of Nikola Tesla's ideas and even electrocuted an elephant as part of a sales pitch. Bet your history books don't tell you that. So uh, what I want to demonstrate is that the verses should be eliminated because this is a myth. But before we do that, I want to show you what the sanctification and deification of Nikola Tesla has occurred on the internet. Saint Tesla, the people's angel, the electric Jesus, the Superman, the extraterrestrial man, Nikola Tesla was test was Nikola Tesla UFO design made with the help of extraterrestrial intelligence. Nikola Tesla worked on a time machine. I could see the past, present, and the future all at the same time. So, uh, one of the things that is listed right here, the very top one, that he invented a alternating current. This is not so. But 10 reasons why uh, Tesla is the scientific god. Nikola Tesla may have been the closest a person has ever come to being a god, a man who could speak eight languages and had more than 700 patents around the world. Well, it turns out to be six languages and 300 patents. Prometheus, spelled wrong, of the new age. There is the new Prometheus. And of course, this one, prayer hacking with Nikola Tesla's six, 369 Secrets for Christians. Now, my personal view of all of this, so I get it out of the way, is I believe this is, uh, tes these are Teslarati, paparazzi, delusional, fanatic, fanboy crackpots. Now, the demonization of Thomas Edison. And again, these images are all from the internet. In a world full of Kardashians via Curie, in a world full of Edisons via Tesla. Tesla, Edison crossed out. Thomas steals all your ideas because he's a huge butthole, Edison. P.S. Tesla rules. And here you see Tesla rules, Edison drools. Wow, Thomas Edison stole Tesla's inventions. And here he is. His inventions changed history and put Edison's to shame. So Edison changed history and erased his name. Tesla created lightning. Edison stole his thunder, all of which is myth. How Thomas Edison stole Nikola Tesla's inventions and left Tesla penniless. So let's examine these two men. And before we start, what are, what are myths? Well, 
the suppositions that word comes from to place under that is find out what's behind it all well how do you do that with fabrications concoctions or bold-faced lies or conspiracy theories uh, <clears throat> i would like to discuss this if you have questions at the end because uh, that term has become so misused and we're trying to deal with the truth and the truth is that which is in accordance with fact and reality so let's take a look at these two men and what the facts and reality are is it this or what will it be well i'm going to try to make comparisons between the two the man who invented ac that's a myth as we will see well thomas edison was born in milan ohio in 1847 he was the youngest of, of seven children. The family moved to uh, Michigan, and at the age of seven, he was expelled from school and never had an, an education, a formal education again. But he was a uh, prolific reader and learned uh, quite well. In 1856, Nikola Tesla was born there's his family and there's little Nicola. And by 1859, at age 12, Edison uh, was working on a railroad. He was producing, selling, and then producing newspapers on the railroad. And uh, an event happened a few years later in 1862 when he was 15. He saved the three-year-old boy who was playing on the tracks from uh, getting crushed by a, an oncoming uh, train. And the father uh, was so impressed that he invited him to learn uh, telegraphy. Now, telegraphy was invented by Samuel Morse in 1884. And Ironically, well, I'll, I'll get to that uh, irony in just a moment, but uh, this is Samuel Morse, and he was supported by Congress because this was the only means of long-distance uh, communication. It turns out that Edison was 100% deaf in one ear and only had 40% in the other, so he, was, he made, made use of Morse code with his wife, and his um, assistant would tap on his knee in meetings to let him know what was going on with Morse code. It's amazing. This is how people communicated in the 1800s. And the uh, alphabet was created from these letters. And the communication was done with... Uh, wires, that is, wires connected to the device which would send the signal, and then they would translate it. Ironically, uh, we have uh, uh, mobile phones today. I have one in my hand, and I can talk to anybody in the world, and yet I could probably snub the person who's standing right next to me. That was part of the irony I was alluding to. Well, Tesla enters elementary school in 1862, and his family moved to uh, the city of Gossick, which uh, he didn't care for because he was more of a country boy. Uh, then he moved to live with his uncle when he went to uh, what they called uh, the gymnasium, which was advanced uh, uh, learning in, in physics and mathematics. He graduated early, a year early. And meanwhile, Thomas Edison moved to Kentucky where he worked with the Associated Press at the age of 19. 
and then moved to Massachusetts where he invented a vote recorder for the uh, legislature there. Then he moved to New York and he patented the stock market ticker, which we don't have anymore, but uh, at one time there was the uh, ticker tape parades in New York. Then he moved to New Jersey and started Mel Medlo Menlo Park at uh, the age of 29. He invented the quad uh, telegraph, which allowed four mess messages to be sent at once, the phonograph and the light bulb. There's the quad device. And then he started the first direct current power plant in New York City, 18. 82. Now, one thing about Edison that is true, and it is, that he did not invent the light bulb. He patented it in 1880, but if you want to know more about that, we can talk about it in the question and answer period. Meanwhile, Tesla, who is 19 years old, is at the University of Graz, and what was introduced in their, their uh, courses was this generator. Now, it was a DC generator, and I'm going to explain uh, uh, how that works. It's rather simple. There are just three parts, a magnet, which is shown here, and a, uh, a rotor, or wires, and automatically what was produced when you turned this, so you need motion in order to produce the electricity. When you turn this, uh, what happened was uh, uh, electricity was created in the wire and it was alternating current. That is, it went one way and then the other way. And in order to avoid that, what was produced was the commutator which was sort of a switch that every time it was going one way, this would switch it the other way, so it would come out as direct current. And these are views of the, the switch, which you can see here. Uh, <clears throat> little toy motors like this one that I took apart, here's the, uh, the magnets over here, and then here are the wires, here's the commutator with the split, and then these are the brushes. Now, it turns out that uh, in his class, he told the professor that he could get rid of that comm commutator, but the professor said that'll never happen. And it turns out that uh, a Tesla quit and became a college dropout at the age of 22. He came back, uh, his father had died and his uncles had got him into uh, the University of Prague which he uh, did not register for because they required Greek and Czech, and those are the two languages that he didn't know. So he moved to um, Budapest at the age of 25 through uh, this man who was a friend of the family and also a colleague of Edison, Tivadar Pukas. He was developing a telephone exchange and Tesla wanted to see if he could get a job there. Well, it turns out he leaves there and goes to Paris and eventually comes to New York at the age of 28. But I want to go uh, back to Budapest because it is at this time that he invents something in his mind, and that is He's considering how the motor works. Remember I showed you that the coils on the inside were moved. These are some of his uh, diagrams. And essentially what he suggested was instead of moving the coil, why not move the magnets? But that's pretty hard to do, so why not use alternating current? So you have current in the first case here in, in this situation. And then it goes here. Meanwhile, the rotor would rotate. And so 
by using alternating current here, you could produce electricity. And this is his first diagram. And you can see here, uh, this would be uh, electricity here and then here. And in effect, he had conceived the rotating magnetic field and invented the first two-phase alternating current induction motor. We can contrast this with the DC motor where you have the stationary magnet here and the turning coils here. In this case, you have magnets moving around because of alternating current and it would move the central rotor. So he gets to Paris, and his first job there is to electrify with DC current, because this was Edison's business there. And this is the uh, Paris Opera House. He worked for Continental Edison, and here you can see Edison Paris, one of his uh, DC motors. Charles Batchelor was in charge there. He was a colleague of uh, Edison. And since uh, Tesla could speak German, he was assigned to Bavaria and then to uh, Strasbourg. Uh, he, meanwhile, he was thinking of his, uh, and producing his alternating current motor. And it was suggested by Batchelor that he go to New York. Well, it turns out that he, he describes going on a train to the, uh, to the boat uh, launch, and he was uh, either robbed or he lost all his money. He comes over on the SS Richmond, arrives in New York in 1884 at the age of 28. The Statue of Liberty had not been put up yet. And he's shocked to see what he sees. He says that New York, or at least, well, that's what he saw first, was 100 years behind Europe. Meanwhile, Thomas Edison was creating the world's first electric power plant in New York. And he had established the electric industry based on direct current. And here you see some of his uh, companies, electric, Edison Electric Light, Everything named Edison, you notice. Edison Machine Works, Edison Electric. And he had a crew of uh, people working for him. And in Menlo Park, they, they were referred to as the muckers. And this essentially was a patent factory. And Edison himself called, him, called himself a the sponge. And all of the... Uh, patents that he achieved were essentially from the help of all of these uh, people. This man here, we'll see later on, he was the uh, inventor of the movie motion picture film. This was contradictory to uh, Tesla, who said, be alone, that is the secret of invention. Be alone, that is when ideas are born. And inside this building, uh, that was on Pearl Street in, in New York. What they didn't show you was the, the smoke that was coming out from the generation of uh, electricity. The way that was done is they burned coal, made steam, and blew the steam to turn the turbines. Now, they, they also used these uh, electromagnets, which they referred to as Lady Janes because they look like ladies' legs, apparently. And here you can see the commutator. And there's a larger version with Edison. The Edison Electric Light Company will run wires into nearly 1,000 homes in New York and has erected 14,000 lamp bulbs. The wires will be run underground. And there's an illustration of that in an actual photograph. And what uh, occurred with direct current is that it could only go one square, within a range of one square mile. So in New York, he had to have uh, these little sections 
Here, here's the Brooklyn Bridge, by the way. And just by comparison, if we, well, what we would get essentially is uh, these smoke factories all over the city. By comparison, here's Buffalo, New York, and here's Kenmore and Cheektowaga. Now, if we were to use DC current, we would have, these would be 50 power plants, and we hardly got into Kenmore and certainly not into Williamsville. And they would be pumping out all kinds of contamination in the atmosphere. So when Tesla meets Edison, there's a nine year difference uh, because Edison had, was hard of hearing. He thought uh, that uh, Tesla had come from uh, Transylvania and he asked him if he ever ate human flesh. One of the greatest events in my life was my first meeting with Edison. This wonderful man who had received no scientific training yet had accomplished so much filled me with amazement. I felt that the time I had spent studying languages, literature, and art was wasted, though later, of course, I learned this was not so. Now, he said that in 1921. Well, he is um, hired to work on the uh, SS Oregon, which was the fastest ship uh, in the world at the time, and also had electricity, but it wasn't working. So uh, Tesla fixed it all up for him. And then this occurred. Edison even threw out the carrot that there's $50,000 in it for you if you can do it, which was a lot of money in those days. When Tesla fulfilled the task and asked Edison for the money, Edison instead said, Tesla, who was born in what's now Croatia, you don't understand American humor, and only offered him a $10 a week raise on Tesla's $18 a week salary. Tesla refused the offer and immediately resigned. Well, that's what was shown on the uh, internet and elsewhere and in books. What about this $50,000? It's a myth. Here are Tesla's own words. The manager had promised me $50,000 on the completion of this task, but it turned out to be a practical joke. This gave me a painful shock, and I resign my position. Doesn't say anything about Edison, and it doesn't say anything about it. Um, the fact is that you, you don't understand American humor. So because of this, they parted ways. So what happened uh, was that two People from New Jersey uh, contacted Edison, uh, contacted Tesla, because they knew uh, of his abilities, and they started a company. And Tesla invented a, a new type of uh, arc lamp, which is used outdoors. And then, uh, once they got the invention, they fired him, and the. Um, the patent went to the owners and all he got was this certificate, which was worthless. So he resorted to digging ditches at $2 uh, a week, but he spoke to the manager who knew uh, people that, uh, that would be interested in his ideas of alternating current. And so uh, with these two individuals by the name of Peck and Brown, they formed a company Tesla company, and this allowed him to uh, patent his rotating magnetic field alternating current induction motor at the age of 32, and there it is. And he was also uh, giving lectures now with the American Institute of Electrical Engineers here at Columbia University and elsewhere, and George Westinghouse noted this. Now, Westinghouse, who was born in uh, Schenectady, went to Union College and uh, didn't last one year. 
but had his first patent when he was 19. And <clears throat> what he invented first was the uh, air brakes for trains. He became a millionaire for that, and, but became very interested in um, promoting alternating current in Great Barrington, Massachusetts and Buffalo, New York. As a matter of fact, the first AC plant was in Buffalo, New York in um, Mohawk Street. And the way you would get alternating current was instead of using that uh, commutator uh, with the split rings, here you had slip rings, and this would give you alternating current. Now, the thing is you could light bulbs with it, but there wasn't any motor except for Tesla's motor. So what uh, Westinghouse did was to buy the patents, the, the patents from Tesla at a considerable price. And uh, Tesla worked for Westinghouse for a year, but this whole arrangement didn't last very long because there was a financial uh, failure in, the, in a bank in Great Britain called Baring. And so what Westinghouse had to do was to call in Tesla. He said, Mr. Westinghouse, you have been my friend. You believed in me when others had no faith. You were brave enough to go ahead when others lacked courage. You supported me when even your own engineers lacked vision. You have stood by me as a friend. Here is your contract and here is my contract. I will tear both of them to pieces and you will no longer have any troubles from my royalties. Is that sufficient? Well, that was a rejection of the royalties. And here's how Tesla justified this. Money does not represent such a value as men have placed upon it. All my money has been invested into experiments, which I have made new discoveries, enabling mankind to have a little easier life. He was owed $12 million, but was paid 200, 216000 So <clears throat> we now have what others have called the current wars between Tesla and Edison. Well, as it turns out, it, it, this is a myth because it wasn't between Tesla and Edison. It was between Edison and Westinghouse because those were the two companies. The war of the currents. Fooling around with alternating currents is just a waste of time. Nobody will use it ever. It's too dangerous. It could kill a man as quick as a bolt of lightning. Direct current is safer. Well, <clears throat> now we, we know about the electric chair and we're going to see that uh, Edison denounced capital punishment as such. Nonetheless, uh, little puppies and kitties were disappearing around his neighborhood because he had secretly hired this man, Harold Brown, to electrofry animals with alternating currents to show that it was dangerous as opposed to the safety of direct current. And here he is uh, electrocuting a horse. But Edison insisted on the term Westinghousing them with AC current. So you can see where the feud is between Westinghouse and Edison. Now enter this man who is a Buffalonian. His name is Alfred Southwick. He was a University of Buffalo professor of dentistry and he invented the electric chair. And you can make your own jokes about a dentist inventing the electric chair. He's buried in a uh, forest lawn and the electric chair started in New York and certainly in Buffalo. Uh, a, a Buffalo man invented it and the first victim was from Buffalo. <clears throat> and here you see the word electric 
execution became electrocution. And the man who was, received the first uh, electrifying murder or actually execution was William Kemmler. He lived on South Division Street in Buffalo. Kemmler's execution amounts to scientific butchery. The gibbet is outdone. Electricity as wretched a blunderer as the dethroned hangman. Four shocks to kill. Tragic moments beside the fatal chair. Blistered by the electrodes. The death chamber reeks with the smell of burning flesh. That was the report in one paper. And in another paper, the New York Herald, they said, inmate Westinghoused, using the term of Edison. This is the culmination of 10 years of work and study. We live in a higher civilization from this day. That was Alfred Southwick's words. Thomas Edison once publicly attempted to display the inherent dangers within Tesla's alternating current baths by electrocuting an enormous ele elephant in front of an audience. In response, Tesla bathed in electric currents and smirked at onlookers as coronas of electricity surrounded his body. Well, there is a, a published uh, uh, drawing of Tesla from a speech he gave in Philadelphia. He could produce quite a bit of uh, voltage on his body and not harm himself because the current was very low. But now we have the elephant being executed. And uh, what I want to show you is that Edison did not produce this. He did not, uh, uh, he was not the originator of this project, let's call it. He was more interested in making a silent movie about this particular event. And here's William Dixon, who invented essentially the uh, motion picture camera for which Edison received the uh, patent. And notice the date, 1903. Now, this was uh, at least um, a couple, uh, maybe seven years after. Niagara Falls. And what the owner of the elephant did was to say, uh, first of all, he, the elephant named Topsy had killed a couple of uh, his uh, handlers because they had stuffed lit, light, lit cigarettes up his uh, trunk and the elephant Topsy killed them. Well, the owner of the elephant in Coney Island decided to kill him with poison and uh, electrocution, and Edison thought it would be a good idea to photograph it or to actually film it. And these are some scenes from the film. And uh, an audience watched. Well, meanwhile, J.P. Morgan created General Electric. Here's what happened. Edison took his various companies put them together in what was he called the Edison General Electric Company in 1889. And then a few years later, uh, J.P. Morgan dissolved that company and made it, Edis, uh, took off the Edison word and made it General Electric. And so J.P. Morgan pushes out um, Thomas Edison. J.P. Morgan's name is still with us. You can see, see it on uh, Wall Street. Uh, he had everything in his hands. He had uh, lumber, uh, the railroads, shipping, and now he wanted some electricity. So the Edison General Electric Company was dissolved and it became GE. Now there was a competition to uh, Elect, uh, to electrify or light up the Expo of 1892. And Westinghouse, with Tesla's ideas, won the contract. It turns out that uh, Edison wouldn't allow his light bulbs with the screw-in type to be used. So Westinghouse used his own uh, plug-in type and lit up 
the fair, which people had never seen before. And there's the Ferris wheel. And inside, you can see Westinghouse Electric and Tesla Polyphase System. And right next door was the General Electric Company. And then the next event was harnessing <clears throat> the power of Niagara. This man, who was a relative of the two first uh, early uh, presidents, Edward Dean Adams, formed an international commission, and the man in the center here is uh, Lord Kelvin. Uh, their idea was to uh, determine how, how to use the power of Niagara. And there were all kinds of things suggested, uh, even compressed air and DC and alternating current. So what uh, Adams did was he went to Tesla because he knew about Tesla's uh, a AC program. And he was convinced to go with AC. And of course, it was Westinghouse who had those patents. Of course, if you have a, a, a motor, you have a generator. They, they work, uh, if you reverse one, you have the other. And so by 1896, Niagara Falls was producing uh, energy. Niagara Falls Power, the mighty cataract at last in harness, pulling Buffalo streetcars. The electric power turned on at midnight last night, which will turn the wheels of industry 27 miles distant. Yeah, and that was done in uh, uh, November 16th, 1896. And the reason, the way they got the uh, energy, the electrical energy to Buffalo was with transformers which we're all familiar with uh, today. And so Buffalo became electrified. It was the first city on the planet to use it, utilize long distance AC electricity. And an ir uh, ironic point here is that after 14 months of negotiation with the Buffalo City Council and its Board of Public Works, they then approved of this coming to buf Buffalo. And so the verses between Tesla and Edison, I tried to show is a, um, a, uh, a myth. Edison, who had he not done anything else beyond his early work in incandescent lighting, would have proved himself one of the greatest benefactors of the age. Now, Tesla said that in Buffalo, New York, at a uh, banquet that was held in, in honor of Tesla. And he mentioned that about Edison. So we're removing the verses. And we can now say that te uh, Tesla was not incarnate deity, nor was Edison an incarnate demon. They were brilliant and strong mind. They did great and woeful things brilliantly right and wrong, works, foibles, passions, and understanding, misunderstandings, but they both helped to build our modern world. And I'd like to make a few comparisons between the two. We'll start with predictions. We are like tenant farmers chopping down the fence around our house for fuel when we should be using nature's inexhaustible sources of energy sun, wind, and tide. I'd put my money on the sun and solar energy. What a source of power. I hope we don't have to wait until oil and coal run out before we tackle that. Quite a uh, wonderful prediction. And here's another one. I have never seen the slightest scientific proof of the religious ideas of heaven and hell, a future life for individual individuals, or of a personal God. So far as religion of the day is concerned, it is a damned fake. Religion is all bunk. Well, that was extraordinary. Science is going to make war a terrible thing, too terrible to contemplate. Pretty soon, we can be mowing down men by the thousands or even millions, almost by pressing a button. Well, he got that one right. Now, let's look at uh, some of Tes Tesla's um, 
predictions. Today, the most civilized countries of the world spend a maximum of their income on war and a minimum on education. The 21st century will reverse this order. It will be more glorious to fight against ignorance than to die on the field of battle. The discovery of a new scientific truth will be more important than the squabbles of diplomats. Even the newspapers of our own day are beginning to treat scientific discoveries and the creation of fresh philosophical concepts as news. The newspapers of the 21st century will give a mere stick in the back pages to accounts of crime or political controversies, but will headline on the front pages the proclamation of a new scientific hypothesis. Well, he said that in 1935 and essentially was wrong. Now, this next situation requires a little bit of background. So this was what was happening during that time, a decade of progress in eugenics. And you can see the dates here of uh, 1932. And here, registering human pedigree, how Kansas develops fitter families, a remarkable experiment in eugenics. And here's a map that shows the legislative status of eugenical sterilization in the United States in 1935. And this poster that read, only healthy seed must be sh uh, sown Check the seeds of heredity, hereditary disease and unfitness by eugenics. <clears throat> and this was a poster showing uh, what they considered um, both an idiot, low-grade imbecile, medium imbecile, and high-grade imbecile, and of course, the moron. And here's what Tesla said about this. The year 2100 will see eugenics universally established. In past ages, the law governing the survival of the fittest roughly weeded out the less desirable strains. Then man's new sense of pity began to interfere with the ruthless workings of nature. As a result, we continue to keep alive and to breed the unfit. The only method compatible with our notions of civilization and the race is to prevent the breeding of the unfit by sterilization and the deliberate guidance of the mating instinct. Several European countries and a number of states of the American Union sterilized the criminal and the insane. This is not sufficient. The trend of opinion among eugenists is that we must make marriage more difficult. Certainly, no one who is not a desirable parent should be permitted to produce progeny. A century from now, it will no more occur to a normal person to mate with a person eugenically unfit than to marry a habitual criminal. Well, that was extraordinary. And yet he said, we are all one, only egos, beliefs, and fears separate us. Well, I want to make a comparison between Tesla and Edison with regard to science, but it's not going to be with Edison, but with Einstein. Oh, by the way, my... Uh, my iPhone is sitting here, and the default uh, the default uh, notification for email is SOS in Morse code. It just happened. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the sixth greatest scientist of all time. Tesla is the greatest scientist ever. And here it says, Calling Tesla merely an inventor would be like referring to Frederick Chopin as a piano player. Nikola Tesla was an alien, the most intelligent man who ever lived. Tesla was the greatest genius of the 20th century. Well, Time Magazine disagreed and they made the person of the century, Albert Einstein. In essence, science is a perpetual search for an intelligent and integrated comprehension of the world we live in. That was the man who said that, is, uh, who, who discovered photosynthesis. Here's what uh, Tesla said. Science is a perversion, except if its end goal is the betterment of mankind. 
The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Now, this is a, post this is a poster in my studio, and it shows uh, Niels Bohr, Charles Darwin, uh, Isaac Newton, and Albert Einstein, and Tesla. Now, the question is, should Tesla be with them? Well, here's what Tesla said about Einstein. He wrote this poem. Too bad, Sir Isaac, they deemed your renown and turned your great science upside down. Now a long-haired crank, Einstein by name, puts on your high teaching all the blame. Says matter and force are transmutable and wrong the laws you thought immutable. Today, scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Now, these are the mathematical scientists uh, of his time and of our time, <clears throat> Isaac Newton, Max Planck, Galileo, Richard Feynman, Paul Dirac, Erwin Schrodinger, Werner Heisenberg, Niels Bohr, James Clerk Maxwell, and of course, Einstein. <clears throat> now, with regard to the electron, the atom, and relativity, here's what Tesla said. Take, for example, the electron theory. Perhaps no other has given rise to so many erroneous ideas and chimerical hopes. Everybody speaks of electrons as something entirely definite and real. Still, the fact is that nobody has isolated it and nobody has measured its charge, nor does anybody know what it really is. Except that J.J. Thompson dis discovered the electron in 1897 and re received the Nobel Prize for it. Uh, it's rather ironic that uh, Tesla, working with electricity, did not believe in electrons. In order to explain the observed phenomena, Atomic structures have been imagined, none of which can possibly exist. And then finally on relativity. Einstein's theory of relativity was a beggar wrapped in purple whom ignorant people take for a king and a mass of error and deceptive ideas. The theory wraps all these errors and fallacies and clothes them in magnificent mathematical garb, which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. Its exponents are very brilliant men, but they are metaphysicists rather than scientists. Not a single one of the relativity propositions has been proved. Well, <clears throat> the, there is something called the luminiferous ether, which was hypothesized to explain how electromagnetic waves work. But uh, Tesla did not accept that. He said, my wireless transmitter does not use Hertzian waves, which were those electromagnetic waves, which are a grievous myth, but sound waves in the ether, the luminiferous ether. And this quotation here says, uh, Nikola Tesla's most suppressed quote down at the bottom, there is no energy in matter other than that received from the environment. Well, we do know uh, E is equal to mc squared, and if Tesla had lived uh, a few more years, he would have seen E is equal to mc squared come to fruition in the atomic bomb. The idea of atomic energy is illusionary, but it has taken so powerful a hold on the minds that although I have preached against it for 25 years, there are still some who believe it to be realizable. So finally, the man who continues to resist after his whole profession has been converted has ipso facto ceased to be a scientist. Now that was, <clears throat> those were the words of Thomas Kuhn, uh, a respected historian of science. And uh, if, if it's to applied to Tesla, so be it. Tesla and Einstein never met, although Einstein did send him a congratulations on his 75th birthday. 
And uh, when Einstein was asked, um, how does it feel to be the smartest man alive? He said, I don't know, you'll have to ask Nikola Tesla. And <clears throat> it is believed that he said that in uh, a sarcastic way. Well, getting back to Tesla and Edison, as a finale, I'd like to show you uh, what appreciation has been done to both. I grew up in New York City, and uh, the consolidated Edison company was the uh, electric company. And all we saw and heard was Con Ed, Con Edison. And then across the country, we have this. And even a star uh, on the Hollywood Walk. But how about Buffalo, the first electric city on the planet? Nothing, absolutely nothing about Tesla. So a group of us got together. We formed a, a nonprofit called the Buffalo Niagara Nikola Tesla Council. And we formed a triptych tribute of appreciation for Nikola Tesla. From Niagara Falls to uh, Midway at, in North Tonawanda to Buffalo itself, we created a, an information panel in Niagara Falls, a replica of a Tesla coil in North Tonawanda, and a statue in Buffalo. And there were the three components. And in Buffalo, we managed to get the uh, city council to name the park where the statue resides as Nikola Tesla Park. And it turns out that this is the only park named in his honor in the entire United States. And these are the four members who put this all together, Paul Swisher, Stephen Lestingy, yours truly, and Martin McGee. And we did this to thank Nikola Tesla, and we thank you for participating today. Okay, wonderful, guys. Great job. Good. So let me just do this. Did um, so I had a question. Do you think it was because he didn't have the like the ego? like Edison to get his uh, name and awareness out there as the inventor of these? Well, he didn't like to work with people. Uh, he spent one uh, less than a year in, um, in Pittsburgh with Edison. Uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Westinghouse. Mm -hmm. And um, there were feuds between him and the, the engineers there. And he, he never really had a company. He did have a company with uh, um, Dean Adams, but that, that didn't help much. Uh, but these huge companies, uh, conglomerates like um, General Electric and Westinghouse, they had the power to do what they wanted to do, but Tesla didn't. Right. And was Westinghouse a Buffalo, from Buffalo? No, he was from Schenectady. Oh, okay, but New yeah. York. Okay. Right. Uh, notice how New York is uh, very prominent in this history. Hmm. I try to emphasize that. Okay, those were the questions. Uh, that is it for today. So this will be recorded. It'll take a day or two to get it up onto YouTube, but you can catch it there then. I'll send you the link as well when it's done. Okay, great. All right, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. we will share this recording. And so people uh, can view it again or send your friends there to see it. Oh, sure, we will. All right. Okay, bye now. Bye-bye. Uh, end the recording. All right, take care, guys. Have a great day. You, you too. Bye now.